Welcome back. We're at Exodus chapter 7, verses 8 to 13 today. Let's hear it. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Work a miracle, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, that it may become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron came to Pharaoh, and thus they did, just as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron threw his staff down before Pharaoh and his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called for the wise men and the sorcerers, and they also, the magicians of Egypt, did the same with their secret arts. For each one threw down his staff, and they turned into serpents. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs, yet Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them, as the Lord had said. So it's their second audience with Pharaoh, Aaron, and Moses go in. And the king of Egypt asks a miracle just as God foretold he would. Now, there's no incantations, there's no magic. Aaron throws the staff down, and it becomes a serpent. And this is an actual transformation from a, a piece of wood into an, a living creature. It actually turns into a serpent. This isn't by human power, it's not by a magic item, it's by divine power. Actually happens. So Pharaoh calls for his wise men and his conjurers, and they come in and they each bring their staff and they throw their stuff down, and wow, they seem to become serpents. And it kind of looks like they duplicated it exactly, and yet we have to infer that, that they are making it appear as though there are serpents, because Satan nor any of his imps has creative power. He does not have the ability to do such a thing. He can bring the appearance, a deceptive appearance. He can bring an, a very exact appearance, but he cannot transform a stick into a living person. That's maybe in the movies, but, but this is reality we're talking about here. Satan has power, but he doesn't have creative power. God alone possesses that. And yet there's nothing in the appearance of the serpents, these other serpents that Pharaoh's people set up. There's nothing in the appearance that makes it look like they're not the real deal. Now, as everybody watches, God's staff turn into a serpent, swallows up one by one the different staffs of the magicians of Egypt, and they're left staffless, you know? That's, there's a clear superiority of God over the other uh, business here. Nevertheless, this whole episode means that Pharaoh has kind of succeeded in casting, you know, he's got the royal court looking on and watching all this. And Pharaoh succeeds in kind of just making Aaron and Moses look like a couple of magicians, a couple of incanters uh, here, and they've come to cause a little bit of havoc. Now, actually, they didn't say any magic spells, Moses and Aaron, they just did what God said. And so really, this is a victory for God. This is a victory for Yahweh. God has demonstrated his, his power again, and, and we haven't even come to the first plague yet. This is kind of a demonstration that God makes. And, and look at the reaction. Pharaoh is not uh, particularly impressed. Satan has no creative power, but this little very episode helps us understand that Satan excels in deceptive presentations. He, he excels in, in spinning the appearance of something, and that's going to be an important thing for us to keep in mind as we move into these last days that we're living in, uh, where Satan's deceptions are definitely outlined and mentioned in Revelation 13, for example, we can expect to see some very intense deceptions even in our day. So friends, let's see what happens next tomorrow morning as we carry right on.